Okay, hi everybody. So in this problem, we'll start to see that our theorems will build on each other, and we will use old theorems. Okay, but first, let's look at the problem. Let C be a real number, and let it be between 0 and 1. So um, that's C. Now we're going to build a sequence, the x sub n's. It'll be, they'll be all real numbers, just a real number raised to some power. Prove that the limit is 0. In other words, we maybe symbols xn go to 0. Um, or we could say, you know, the sequence x sub n converges to its limit 0. Okay. All right, um, proof. Recall, dear reader of my proof, what it even means for these symbols to be true. That's really important. The first step of your proof is remind the reader what is even the definition of the symbols in the statement of the theorem. That the symbols x sub n goes to 0 mean, what do they mean? For all d, there exists a capital N cutoff such that going past the cutoff implies that the x sub n's minus 0 are less than d. And then we have to remember, like, well, this, this is how I start. And then I remember, like, oh, yeah, d has to be a positive number. It's like the radius of a ball. This is the difference be between the sequence and the limit. And so that difference should be in a little ball. So this has to be a positive real number. Or you could take positive rational number if you don't like reals yet. Um, the cutoff is an index, so it's a natural number. The x sub n's are defined for natural numbers. So, you know, x sub capital N. And then really we want that all of the things past that, like x sub capital N plus 1, x sub capital N plus 2, all the x sub n's where n is greater than or equal to capital N, all of them are now have this true, that the actual sequence with that index is in this little ball around the limit. Super important first step of a proof is what are we proving? Okay. Now, before I start writing more of my proof, um, I'm just going to do some calculations with the sort of the goal, the goal of our proof. So let me just go over here and say, okay, calculations, and maybe I'll call them star because I'm probably going to refer to them somewhere down here, and I don't want to rewrite them. Um, x sub n minus 0 less than d is true if and only if x sub n is less than d. Okay, minus 0 doesn't do anything. And then I might as well just put the actual definition of our x sub n's. That's c to the n. And that's true if and only if the absolute value of c to the n is less than d. This is the rules of, um, of absolute values. Even for complex numbers, this is even true. This absolute value of z times w is absolute value of z times absolute value of w. So the absolute value of z squared is just the absolute value of z times the absolute value of z. In other words, it's the absolute value of z squared. Um, so this is even true for complex numbers, even though we have real numbers. But real numbers are just a subset, so it's still true. OK. Um, and then, oh, actually, c is, is positive, or 0, and so I can just completely get rid of the absolute value symbol, right? Because the absolute value of a positive number is just that number, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. Okay. And now, here's the step. So eventually, we're going to need to show that for any d, no matter what d we choose, there's some capital N so that all the little n's have this. But here's the thing. This is true if and only if 1 over c to the n 
is greater than 1 over d. Now, why is that an if and only if? Well, because c to the n and d are both positive. So um, maybe I'll say because for any numbers a and b that are positive numbers, a less than b is true if and only if 1 over a is greater than 1 over b. Let's see an example of that. 2 is less than 5. 1 half is greater than 1 fifth. OK, let's take a third is less than uh, 2 thirds. That's, tr that's true. 3 is greater than 3 halves. That's true. So this is working. I mean, this sort of breaks if we take like negative 2 is less than 5. But 1 over negative 2 is greater than 1 over 5. Well, no. Um, so in other words, we really need that these are positive. Both of them are positive numbers for this if and only if to hold. So this one is OK as long as these are both positive. This is positive. This is positive. So this if and only if is valid. But now look at this. Um, well, first of all, I mean, I might as well just take 1 over c to the n greater than 1 over d. Let y, or I don't know, let, let b equal 1 over c. Um, since, I don't know, I mean, basically, since c is strictly less than 1, then we also have that 1 over c is strictly greater than 1. And so if we're just going to rename it b, then b is greater than 1. But now we have b to the n, um, you know, uh, if and only if. This is true, if and only if b to the n is greater than 1 over d. And let's call, let, let, let 1 over d be capital B. So then we can replace this with a capital B. And remember the last problem. The last problem showed that if any if some number is greater than 1, then the sequence b to the n will go to infinity, meaning that for any big number, potentially big number, um, we can find a capital N. So um, previous problem proved b to the n goes to infinity if b is greater than 1. And so because c is less than 1, 1 over c is greater than 1. And so this thing will get as big as we want. In particular, no matter what d we choose, no matter what d we choose, we can get bigger than 1 over d. So, so there exists a capital N such that going past the capital N implies b to the n is greater than b. And this is true no matter what, you know, so no matter what b. That was the previous problem. In particular, no matter what d, 1 over d can be just b, <laughs> capital B. Um, yeah, so now I think we got it. I think we got it. Um, but let's carefully explain this. So I'm going to go over here. How do I explain this to my reader, my poor reader who's going to try to understand my proof? Well, no matter what d is chosen, let capital B equal 1 over d. Then uh, let b equal 1 over c, which is greater than 1, um, since c is strictly less than 1. Right? Um, I'm sort of setting it up. Um, my previous problem um, 
we know that the b sub n's then, the sequence now that we're forming, we could even give them a name, like the y sub n defined to be b to the n, um, go to infinity. So there exists a capital N such that going past N implies b to the N is greater than anything, anything we chose, in particular, capital B. Okay. But, but the calculations in star show that for the same capital N, that this capital N works for us. Meaning, um, b to the n greater than b, if and only if, x to the n less than d. Meaning, b to the n greater than b is true, if and only if, uh, x to the n minus 0 is less than d. And that concludes the proof. Okay, this is a this is a, a tricky one, but it's super important to just know that when you raise a number that's has absolute value strictly less than one, um, it's going to go to zero. It's going to sort of die away, um, and we're going to use this in the next problem. Okay, so. I mean, these calculations were, were really important here. Um, all of these. There are other ways to explain this. And I encourage you to take out a blank sheet of paper and see, you know, if you don't look and you really try to reproduce these ideas, you'll probably reproduce them in a different way, a way that makes sense to you. It'll roughly be this but you might use different names for the, for the symbol or for the different parts of this puzzle. But basically, the thing we're trying to show will be true if and only if something else that we basically proved last problem. And that's the idea. Okay. Try to quiz yourself. Blank sheet.